Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to show you a very simple casting technique that will produce a wide variety of shapes. It's called cuttlefish bone casting. We're going to use this piece of material that you can get at a pet store to create something like this today. Cuttlefish bone provides you with an opportunity to create all types of shapes and forms if you practice. And what's great about it is the material itself imparts an interesting texture to the overall piece. Let me clear this off the table and I'll show you how to get started. Okay, let me show you the tools that you're going to need for this project. The first thing that you're going to need is a surface that you can heat your crucible on top of. Now, this should be a material that will not transfer heat to your tabletop. And don't work on a nice table, because you might heat it up and spoil it. Now, you're also going to need a pair of diagonal cutters or dikes, some binding wire, a paintbrush, dry, nothing on it, a marker, something dark for good contrast, a couple of toothpicks, something to scrape with, could be anything, could even be a screwdriver, a crucible that you're going to heat your sterling silver shot in, okay? And you can combine it with some sterling silver scrap. Now if you use scrap material, in order to make this melt quickly, you may need to increase the surface area. And the way that you do that is you cut it into smaller pieces using a pair of shears. Okay? If you don't have a good pair of shears, a heavy duty pair of scissors might actually work. Okay, you're also going to need cuttlefish bones. Now, if you are lucky, you'll get a big one and you can use it with just one bone per, per casting. If you can't get the big ones, you can go to a pet store and probably get this size and you can marry two of them together in order to make a large enough cuttlefish mold. All right. The magic that makes all of that happen in the crucible to melt everything so we get a casting is this material. This is casting flux. It's basically borax soap. So if you're on a budget, you can get like Boraxo 20 Mule Team soap and it'll work just fine. Now, we also have on the table here a bowl of water, which when we're done with the casting, we want to submerge it in water so that it just stops the smoking of the cuttlefish bone and reduces the smell. And I also have a jeweler's saw frame here. Now, I'm going to use that to manipulate the cuttlefish bone, and you could also use it to clean up the casting later. Now, you're going to need a heat source to make the material in the crucible melt, so you're going to need a torch. Now, if you check out our other video on torches, you can see the differences between them, and I would recommend using either the acetylene torch or this one here. This one is fueled with map gas. And last but not least, don't forget your safety glasses. That and an apron. You want to protect your eyes, you want to protect your body, and for goodness sake, don't sit down while you heat the material you could end up with a lap of molten metal, and you don't want that. I've laid out the things that we need in order to set up for cuttlefish casting. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the shape of the actual bone. When you pick them up, you'll notice that there's one end that's a little bit thin, and another end that as it goes down, the other end starts to have like a little pot belly. This is the best part right here because it gives us the most thickness or the biggest area in which to cast. So we're going to try to work with that area there. So what I want to do is I'm going to lay down the bone and I'm going to give myself a guideline. I'm going to say, gee, I want to get rid of this much of the top and maybe about that much of the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll lay my other cuttlefish bone right next to it, belly to belly, and I'm just going to extend those lines over to the other bone, and they kind of match up. Now, like I said, if you were lucky enough to find a big bone, you could probably just use one bone and cut it in half. But in this case, I'm going to have to use two. This material is really, really soft. It's almost like styrofoam. It's easy to stick your fingernails into it. But it has an, an outer shell that's really, really hard. So it's going to require the use of a jeweler saw in order to cut through it. 
Okay, so I'm going to sit down, and what I want to do is just place this on top of the, the bench pin, and I'm just going to cut through it. Super easy, right? Okay, let's go for the center period part. Okay, that one was easy. Sometimes they're thick and they're difficult to cut through. These are pretty thin. All right, so let's cut this end off. What you want to avoid are ones that have cracks in them. Don't buy the ones with cracks. Okay, this one's a little thick. Hear that? There we go. Okay, your jeweler saw will cut right through it. Okay, so now I have two pieces, but I can't get them to fit together. Guess what? I prepped for this. I already pre-cut two others. And what I did was I went outside and I rubbed them on the pavement to flatten them out. So I now have two flat surfaces that will just nicely shut together. Okay, when you have your two pieces together like this, what I like to do, and this is just me, I like to sit back down, pick up my jeweler saw, and just cut a couple of notches on both sides. So I'm going to notch it here. What I'm doing, if you sew, it's like cutting darts. Okay, there's one side. I'm going to do the other. And you can be as inaccurate as you want with this process. It doesn't really matter. All you're doing is you're providing a space for your binding wire to go to anchor the two halves together. Okay, let me show you what I've got. Okay, so now if I open it up, you can see how there's little darts on all, or on all sides that match up. Okay, now the bone has sort of a natural channel going right here. I'm going to turn that into my pouring channel. And what I want to do is show you how to get the most variety of texture out of your bone. So I'm going to keep my design rather simple and focus on texture, which is the great part of this. Okay, so let's just give ourselves a little pattern to follow. What I'd like to do is I'd like to, say, make, oh, just a little circular medallion. So I'm going to carve out something about that big. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a channel on both sides that I will be able to pour the molten metal into to lead to the medallion that I want to cast. Okay, so let's now carve it out. You can use almost anything to carve this material. I sometimes even use a screwdriver, but here I have a little piece of metal, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start scraping. And this has a nice right angle to it, so maybe I'll end up with a nice edge to my piece too, which would be kind of fun. So I'm just going to start scraping it out. Now, as you do this, it's good to clear the bone periodically so you can kind of see where you've been and where you're going. Okay, I'm almost there. So I'm thinking that this will be a nice piece that can exhibit oh, a wavy texture and something more pointy, perhaps. Now guess what? Because the bones grow in layers, and imperfect layers at that, there's already a natural waviness to this material. Okay, let me just refine my edge. All right, and I'll clear the area, and then I'm going to gently blow it out. Okay, so you can see that I cut out the medallion. Now, I don't know if, you, if the camera can pick it up or not, but can you see the little bit of waviness that naturally occurs in the bone? Okay, if I want to accentuate that, what I need to do is I need to take a paint brush, and in this case, this is an old flex brush, and I'm just going to brush it off and blow it out. Brush it off again. Blow it out. 
And I think this time you'll be able to see the wavy texture that's already naturally in there. Okay, if I want to make a different type of texture that projects out and gives it a lot more three-dimensionality, I could use a toothpick, I could use a little piece of copper that's pointed. In this case, I think I'm going to use, no, I think I'll use the toothpick instead. So I'm going to just poke. So I'll lay the bone flat, and I'm just going to start to poke. I'll put one in the middle, and I'll just do like a radial effect, like, like it's a, a star pattern or something. Okay, so now you can see that I've got the natural waviness on the surface, and there are going to be parts that jut out of it and they're going to be off of a very nicely shaped medallion. Okay, now I need to cut the pouring structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something to scrape again, and I'm just going to cut into the bone, and then I'm going to start to just scrape it out within those lines. Now, you don't want to cut so far that you cause the bone to break, but you want to cut enough that it forces you to go a little bit deep and to uh, allow you to create a pouring funnel that will make it easy for you to aim and get your silver into. And don't worry about the, the look or the shape of this thing. It's just, it's just a, a way to facilitate getting the metal into the bone. Okay, so There's my bone, or at least one half of my bone mold, with the channel cut. And what I can do is I could put the other half of it together with it, like this, where it's going to match up. And I could take a tool and just slide it along the walls of the other one to draw the path that I need to cut out. So this one's pretty easy to do. So I'll just cut it here. And I'll cut it over here. And then I'll just start to scrape this side out. It's not entirely necessary to do the other side, but it sure makes it easier if you do. Okay, so there's the other half. Here's this half. And when I put them together, that's what I see from the top. So I have a bigger opening that leads to a smaller funnel end that channels the metal into my gap, which I'm going to fill up to make my medallion. Okay, so these are together. The last thing I need to do is I'm going to take two lengths of binding wire. And I've got a really thick binding wire. I'm using this so it shows up on camera. You could use a thinner binding wire. And what I suggest is create like a big U. Put your bones together. And then just overlap. And give yourself a nice twist. Don't twist too hard. You don't want to twist the bones so much that you actually crack them. OK, that's good enough. I may not actually even need the bottom one, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make another U, put it, put my bones inside of it, and I'm using the little darts that I cut earlier to hold it in place, okay, and give it another twist. Again, not too tight, okay. It doesn't want to stand up on its own unless I go like that, but there we go. This is a complete cuttlefish mold ready for casting. It's going to stink and make a lot of smoke, so I don't want to do it in here. I'm going to go outside and do it. I'll meet you outside in a minute and show you how it's done. I'm outside and I've set up everything for the cuttlefish bone casting. So, I have my cuttlefish bone securely placed between two objects so that it doesn't fall over. I have the crucible on top of a heat resistant surface and I have something under the handle to keep it level. I have my fresh sterling silver shot or 
casting grain. I have some scrap sterling silver, and I have the casting flux. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a combination of these two metals that approximate the size of the casting into the crucible. I'll take the torch, heat it, adding flux as necessary, and then pour it into the mold. It should take just a couple of minutes. Okay, let's get started. Now there's no good way of determining exactly how much silver we're going to need to cast, so we have to approximate. So I'm going to say that's about the size of the medallion that I'm trying to cast. But I need to have a little bit more silver so that it can fill the channel and push it down by the force of gravity into the mold. So I'm going to add a little bit of scrap. Now, if your scrap has any tape on it or something like that, don't worry about it. It will burn away. And I've cut it into small pieces so it will melt quickly. Okay, that ought to do it. So let me set this aside. Let's light our torch and get started. Now we just let this set for a second, and then I just throw it in the water to let it quench. Sort of smells like burning shrimp. So now we'll take this back upstairs and we'll see what we got. Okay, we're back in the studio, and I have our cuttlefish bone ready to be opened up. Now. If you're allergic to seafood or shellfish, you might want to avoid this project and definitely don't do it inside your house. Not unless you've got great ventilation because it's stinky. Okay, so I've taken off our wires and now the great reveal. Ta-da! You can't see anything really, so let's pull it out. And there's our piece covered in schmutz. So let me grab something to scrape it out with. Okay, and you can see we've got a lot of texture on this front surface. We've got the wavy grain pattern of the natural bone, and we have a few little dots that I made by pushing the toothpick into the bone. So they kind of look like little BBs or little pearls sitting on a wavy surface. And you can see all I need to do is cut off this top sprue button, correct the shape, and I've got a beautiful pendant to wear. I hope you enjoyed this project. Have fun working with the cuttlefish bone. Be sure to check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.